Hi there, Dave here with a video about the object-oriented version of our parking structure application. So I brought it up here and I've separated the code into, well there's the GUI part. This is the part the user is going to interface with, so the graphical user interface part. And then the rest of the functionality, the stuff that doesn't have to do with the GUI, has to do with the garage, and the garage has uh, multiple floors inside. And so we have an array of floors, and there's a floor object. So each garage has multiple of these floor objects, and each floor has multiple parking spaces, and a car object can be in one of those parking spaces. So we're trying to move the functionality of of the application into the proper place so that we know where it's going to be so we can maintain it more easily. So here we go. The GUI uses the garage and the car and the floor and so we import them. We can see that the garage uses just the floor and the car, and the floor uses just the car, and the car doesn't use anybody. The car is real simple. All he has is a constructor. That's that underscore, underscore, and knit. And when we make a new car, we merely pass in the owner and the plate. And then we go ahead and remember the owner and the plate so that when we make this new object called self, it has an owner and a plate. And when we get it back from wherever we made it from, then we can put a name to it. We can see that the floor is also pretty simple. It has a constructor where we're passing in the name of the floor, and that happens to be a color in this situation. And I changed this from class. Uh, we used to ask for the color. I actually created when I uh, build it in the garage. We'll see that in a couple of minutes. So I'm passing in the floor name and the number of spaces. And so I go ahead and I remember that floor name for this instance that I'm creating of the floor object. And then I go ahead and I have an array called parking spaces that I'm also going to remember. So each floor is going to have a name and some parking spaces. And then I go ahead and load up those parking spaces with null length strings, just like we've seen before. And now I have two methods that this garage, that, excuse me, that the floor can do. It can, uh, it can add car to space and it can remove car from space. So when we add a car to a space, what we're doing is we're passing in a car object and the space that we want it to go to on the floor. Remember, we're in the floor. So we're going to pass in the car that we want to put in and the space number. And then we see, well, is there nothing in the space? If there is, then go ahead and put the car in there and return information to wherever it was called from about what happened here. We don't want the f objects here talking to the user. That's the job of the GUI here. So all we want the objects doing is returning information about its status and letting the GUI make the decision about what the user sees. So notice that we're returning strings of what happened. And here in the remove, the floor does very little. All it does is it does the actual setting of the space to a blank. That way, if the floor wants to set it to some other thing, uh, just like it does when it's initializing, right? We see that when we're initializing, we're putting null length strings there. So if we wanted to change that to something else in the initialization, we could also change it in the remove, and nobody in the outside world would be any the wiser. This is called encapsulation. So over here, as we get more sophisticated, the garage, well, the garage does a little bit more. 
it's going to take in the name and the address. Yeah, we'd like to have the name and address of our garage, then the number of floors and the number of uh, spaces on each floor. And then we just go ahead and remember this stuff, right? We remember the name and the address and the number of floors and spaces in case we want to use that later on. And then we go ahead and make an array of floors. And then we go ahead and we initialize we use as the we use the initialize routine a nick garage routine to set everything up and there's a nick garage right inside the garage object sure it doesn't belong inside the GUI it belongs inside the garage so we have to think about what's being done and why it goes in the code where it's being where it is so yeah when we when we're creating this stuff when we're cre initializing the garage I decided to go ahead and make the first couple. The first one's going to be red, the next one's going to be blue, and uh, any after that are all going to be white, right? Because F is first zero, so it's going to come in here. It's going to be set to white, then it's going to say, oh, it's zero, so set it to red. No, it's not one, so we go ahead and make the floor. So here we have every time this is this line is being executed, we're making a new floor. And then we're appending that new floor to the floors that are part of self. Yep, there they are. There's the floors right there. That's the array that's part of the garage. And I'm appending the floor, the brand new floor I just made right there, by executing the constructor of the floor, which we just saw right here. Right? Okay, let's take a look at what add garage does. Well, excuse me, add car. Well, add car basically finds out what it is that you want to add and then goes off and asks the floor to go ahead and do the work. So the heavy lifting is done by, in this case, the floor. In fact, the add car to space method is doing the heavy lifting, where in this particular, when we do the remove, the garage, the garage remove car is doing the heavy lifting. And in fact, the floor is doing very little. You see that? The very little over here where the floor is doing something here. So we've moved the stuff around, showing that we can move it back and forth depending upon where it makes the most uh, sense in this in a particular situation. But the key element is that to the GUI, uh, the GUI doesn't know. It doesn't know where these things are being done. So when we look at the GUI down here, we can see that the, uh, that the add car and the remove car are almost identical the way that they work. We just, we're in, in the add car, we pass in a car and the floor number and the space number. And then the car is made up of the plate and the name, right? The name and the plates, which we pass in to the constructor of the car. There's the name and the plate when we make the car and so that's passed in when we make the way we add the car here and then we say okay there's the car I want to add I'm passing it into there and then there's the floor number I want to put it into and there's the space I want to put into and I just print whatever the method add car returns and in fact it's going to be returning what the floors add car to floors method is going to be generating gets complicated. But the GUI's pretty easy, pretty simple, and that's what we want. We want for our programmers to be able to use the GUI and have it make sense and have it be able to use all of our objects here without having to have a lot of stress on the GUI level. So we'll put a lot of pain into these things to make them really easy so that the outside people who are using our application have it easy. We can make things harder on the inside to make it easy on the outside, and that's the whole point of objects. See you later.